Ukraine has fired U.S. Attackums missiles into the Kursk region of Russia. Russia has updated its nuclear doctrine to state if a non-nuclear power fires upon its territory with the assistance of a nuclear power, it is within the realm of escalation to nuclear conflict. A clear sign to the West, they say. Ladies and gentlemen, is Joe Biden or the deep state or something? Are they trying to start World War Three so that Trump can't get us out of this conflict? That's I've speculated it. North Korea is sending in the troops. They may send in substantially more. South Korea may get involved. We have the makings, my friends, of a World War Three. Understand this before I read the story on Vladimir Putin and his nuclear doctrine. It doesn't happen overnight. The escalation of these conflicts. But you will face it suddenly. Then uh, it's gradually then suddenly. So let me explain. First, history is condensed. When you read about the Civil War, for instance, they say in 1861, Fort Sumter, blah, blah, blah. But they don't talk about the seven years of bleeding Kansas and the conflict that had been bubbling up for decades, decades. In fact, there was talk of civil war in the 1820s over slavery. Right now, it's been only a couple of years. This could be a precursor conflict to a World War Three. I mean, take a look at what's what kicks off World War Two or World War One. Doesn't just happen in a vacuum. These conflicts were bubbling up with the ongoing tensions and the escalation. Gradually, then suddenly, we may one day hear of the news of a nuclear detonation. Now, I ask you this. How much are you really paying attention to the war in Eastern Europe? You're not really right. But it's affecting everything that's going on in the world, especially what's going on with Israel, Iran, the Red Sea, the Houthi rebels. These conflicts are bubbling up all over the place and they have a direct impact on the cost of your food. But we don't really pay attention all that much. When the wars break out, People imagine they'll be hiding in their homes. Bombs are going off. But many of the wars that we've experienced in the United States, they're, they're in far off lands, even World War Two. We hear the news of victory. And that's it. You know, victory, they yell. And we are here in New York listening on the radio and the TV. The war didn't come here. Pearl Harbor, don't get me wrong, but not to the continental United States. A nuclear detonation could happen in Ukraine. If Vladimir Putin fires and decides to escalate. And you'll hear about it in the news. And you'll carry on the same as you always do. The question is, does the war come here and how bad does it get? CNN reports. President Vladimir Putin has updated Russia's nuclear doctrine two days after his U.S. counterpart Joe Biden granted UK Ukraine permission to strike targets deep inside Russia with American made weapons. These are U.S. made attackums missiles into the Russian region of Bryansk. Interesting. I thought it was Kursk. The attack, if I'm sorry, the change comes at, uh, as Russia claims Ukraine fired on Bryansk. I see the attack, if confirmed, would mark the first such use by Ukraine since Biden gave them the green light. The Russian government had previously signaled that, that the U.S. approval would be a dangerous escalation of the war in Ukraine. Now, 1000 days old, the Kremlin began its first this first fresh round of nuclear saber rattling Tuesday, saying the revised military doctrine would in theory lower the bar to first use of nuclear weapons. In a call with reporters, Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov noted the changes meant mean that the Russian Federation reserves the right to use nuclear weapons in the event of aggression using conventional weapons against it and or the Republic of Belarus. Nuclear deterrence is a pillar of Russian military doctrine, but the revision appears to broaden the definition of what would be considered aggression against Russia. An important element of this document is that nuclear deterrence is aimed at ensuring that a potential adversary understands the inevitability of retaliation in the event of aggression against the Russian Federation or its allies. The revised doctrine is clearly meant to send a strong signal to Ukraine's Western backers without the risk of escalation and make policymakers and the public think twice about the possible consequences of providing more sophisticated and far reaching weaponry to Ukraine. This means nothing. This means absolutely nothing. And I got to say, I am absolutely terrified here. From CNN, Ukraine fires U.S. made long range missiles into Russia for the first time. Russia is treading lightly. Now, I'll say this, as I often do. This one's for all the liberals out there and the fake news. I, I, I don't want to say that I hate Russia. It's a little strong, but I am not a fan of Russia. I think that Vladimir Putin is an autocrat. 
He's a despot who uses political machinations to maintain power for decades to enrich himself. Sure, he thinks he's doing good for Russia or whatever, but this is not how a functioning government should be. I, I think his system is no better off than communist China. Many people make arguments about, but the culture, everything's great. Now, nah, look, I got problems with the Democrats and the Republicans, but Vladimir Putin's a scumbag. The invasion of Ukraine was wrong. I have long maintained that. They lost the soft power battle, so they decided kinetic conflict was the way to go, to go about this, and they should not have. I think it's morally wrong. I still, however, don't understand why the U.S. has intervened on behalf of Ukraine, a country we're not allied with. Now, some make the argument that there was a memorandum that we must come to their defense because we negotiated the, the, uh, their removal of nuclear, or, or actually, we, we negotiated their nuclear deproliferation after the Soviet Union collapsed. Fine. But I do believe this is better suited, everything that's going on for de-escalation and negotiation as to what Russia needs to stop the conflict. And that is likely a land bridge into Crimea, access to the Black Sea. I believe that's likely where we will end up. Does this mean there's concessions? Yep. Does it mean we're, mean we're fans of Russia? No. Does it mean you, Ukraine is weak? No. Does it mean Ukraine is, is wrong? No. Ukraine's got its own problems. It's a very corrupt country. Okay. And I know people from there, and I think what Russia did in their invasion is completely wrong. You can argue that NATO expansionist policies led to this point. Sure. But it's soft power and soft power is, is the mechanism by which power expands appropriately. I, 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 I'm not going to hear otherwise. Look, you can make your arguments fine. But I believe that if the U.S. is negotiating and going to countries like Ukraine and saying we've got money, we've got resources and Russia can't compete. But by Russia, Russia decides to invade, start shooting people. And that's wrong. But I tell you this, the U.S. approving Ukraine to fire missiles into Russia is an escalation beyond the scope of what we should be involved with in any capacity. Because like I said, you want to make an argument that we can defend Ukraine because of the memorandum. I forgot what it was called. Uh, when we said, we'll defend you if you give up your nukes. Heaven help us if they had nukes. OK, fine, fine. Make that argument. I'm not a fan. I agree with Ron Paul. One generation cannot promise the children of the next. But fine. Let's say you operate in that regard, uh, in that in that con in those confines. Why then is the U.S. allowing Ukraine to attack Russian territory directly? Of course, the response is going to be, oh, it's because we're, we're, we're repelling these forces. It is not worth World War Three. So heaven help us that Trump gets in and shuts this down. But I got to tell you, my fear is Putin saber rattling and Putin saying we're going to update the nuclear codes ain't doing nothing to deter U.S. and Ukraine and NATO. They want the conflict. They're pushing now into two different regions of Russia. North Korea is getting involved. You know what, man? We may have to defend Ukraine. We made an agreement. Fine, whatever. But are you kidding me? To escalate for this reason into World War III is not worth it. The idea was we didn't want nukes to be used. If Russia invades Ukraine and they have nukes, they're going to use them. Russia has nukes. They're going to use them. They're playing this game where they say Russia is not going to use these nuclear weapons, but I certainly believe they will understand nuclear weapons are not all intercontinental ballistic missiles. But now we're facing these threats. The liberal argument and the left and the neocon and all of that, they argue, well, Vladimir Putin's not going to use nukes. He's saber rattling. I believe he will. It can start with nuclear artillery, which would devastate Ukraine. So maybe the best option right now is... Russia is going to lose a lot of territory that they've claimed in this fight. Ukraine's going to have to give up something, too. But the fighting has to stop. And we can blame Russia. And the end of the treaty can say, look, Russia, you'll get a land bridge into Crimea, land access to your warm water port and industrial center in Sevastopol. There will be sanctions and penalties for the invasion. You'll pay a price. Nobody's happy, but we're done. We don't want this to go North Korea, South Korea, Iran gets involved with with Israel bubbling up between Iran. We're facing serious risk of World War Three. So de-escalation is paramount. But you know what they're going to say? The liberals are going to say anybody who in any way tries to negotiate peace is a Kremlin stooge, blah, blah, blah. These people would see us destroyed for what? A gas pipeline in Ukraine? Cheaper energy to Europe? Ukraine? 
A Ukrainian is accused of bombing the Nord Stream pipeline. So all these liberals were like, Tim Paul said Ukraine's an enemy, enemy of this country. Yeah, he's a Russian. Germany accused a Ukrainian of bombing the Nord Stream pipeline. That is destroying our access to cheaper energy in Europe for our allies and NATO. Are you nuts? In what way is that not an act of war against us? Insane. Because it was Russia's pipeline. Cutting off energy to, to Europe does not benefit us in our conflict with anyone on the planet. And Germany, our ally, is blaming a Ukrainian for doing that. We should investigate this. But these people are psychopaths. They want war for the sake of war to prop up the military industrial machine. And it is nightmarish and it's insane. We must have peace. I'm going to leave it there. Next segment's coming up on the hour. So smash that like button. Share the show with everyone you know. More segments to come. Thank you all so much for hanging out. Become a member at TimCast.com and we'll see you all shortly.